Hello students, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I am going to explain you the fourth lesson from Vistas, that is the enemy, which was written by Paul S. Bach. In this particular lesson, Dr. Sado Hoki is the hero of the story. And uh, Sado Hoki uh, was a Japanese famous doctor. And in this particular lesson, his father was uh, an orthodox Japanese man. He believed in the traditions of Japan. Sado's education was his chief concern. That's why Sado was sent to America at the age of 22 to learn all about surgery and medicine. Those were the days that Americans had developed severe prejudice towards Japanese. Prejudice means here hatred. Sado could not find a room to stay there. Finally, he got a room of an old woman. He used to go to a professor's house. The professor and his wife were kind enough to show compassion towards the foreign students like Sado. Okay. Sado uh, met a girl named Hana at the professor's house. He fell in love uh, with her, but he waited to know whether she was a pure Japanese race. Okay. That is what uh, interaction. And he returned from America at 30. That means from 22 to 30, he stayed there. After coming back, he informed his father about Hana and uh, his father made an inquiry about Hana and her race. Then the marriage had been arranged in the old Japanese way. They got married and they got two children and they were happy. Yes, before he became famous, uh, Sadao's father was dead. Next, Dr. Sadao Hockey's house was built on a spot of the Japanese coast where as a little boy he had often played with his uh, father. The low square stone house was set upon rocks well above a narrow beach that was outlined with bent pine trees. Yeah, as you see in the image, so in the house, it is the house and in front of the house you can see the beach here. So it is a it is constructed somewhat at the height and here you can see the pine trees also right that is what the picture of his house just at the edge of the beach one day Sado became famous not only as a surgeon but also as a scientist then world war broke out yes the world war broke out america and japan had become enemies then all the japanese hated americans Americans were their acute enemies. Everyone from small to the big hated and uh, treated Americans as their enemies. All the doctors were sent to warfare with troops except Sarau. Yeah, all the doctors were sent to warfare. Why doctors? To treat the wounds of the soldiers. They were sent to warfare except Sarau. Why Sarau was there in Japan without going to warfare? There are two reasons. The first reason is he was perfecting a discovery which would cure wounds entirely clean. So, he was trying to find out a medicine which would clean the uh, wounds of uh, every so soldier. Okay. And the other reason is the old general might need an operation for a condition for which he was now being treated medically. That means there was an old general. He was under treatment. So, some doctor must be there to treat this old general. Okay. That doctor was none but our Sadao Hockey. And then one day Sadao was standing in the veranda of his beach house. As I told you in the beach house. Okay. There he was standing at the beach house here maybe. Yes. And he was looking at this particular place. When he was looking uh, at that particular thing. So he was recollecting his uh, American days and all. And Sadao was uh, standing in the veranda of his beach house and observing the nature. The weather was full of fog and he could not see the things clearly. He wanted to go in for Hana and his two children. By then he had seen Hana coming out of his house. She was wearing some a blue hori uh, on her kimono. So blue hori is kind of dress which they used to wear in Japan. Long gown type. They were rec recollecting their American days. It was at this moment that they both of them saw something black coming out of the mists see actually they were looking at each other they were very uh, loving each other that means they love each other very much and that was fine and uh, then suddenly they had seen a black figure 
in the ocean coming out of the mists mists means here that fog completely it was a man who was uh, he was flung out of the ocean that means he came out of the ocean and he staggered a few steps on the beach his body outlined against the mist his arms above his head then the curled mists hid him again because of the mist they couldn't see him clearly sometimes he is visible and sometimes he is invisible then who is that hana cried she dropped sadao's arm and they both leaned over the railing of the veranda and now they saw him again yes the man was on his hands and knees crawling then they saw him fall on his face and lie there first uh, the man was staggering next the man was <clears throat> walking on his knees and hands and finally had fallen down yes in the beginning they thought that might be a fisherman when they reached this man they saw the sand with fresh red stain that means he was bleeding then sadao exclaimed he's wounded he made haste to the man as a doctor yes he had that uh, okay tendency to see what happened to him who lay motionless his face in the sand an old cap stuck to his head soaked with sea water when they turned his head they were shocked to see a white man a white cap was found on which it was written us navy he was their enemy an american that was the situation when they reached this man close what happened they found that he was a white man and immediately they observed the cap on the cap it was written us navy that means an american immediately sadao remembered the wound on the right side of his lower back sadao saw that a gun wound a gun wound had been reopened he recollected the sea moss and packed the wound so that bleeding would stop actually he thought that yes this wound the bullet wound had been reopened that means he was shot some one day or two days back however what happened he could escape and then uh, he was trying to escape and then uh, in the ocean rocks hit his wound and the, the, the wound had been reopened he recollected the sea moss and packed the wound so that bleeding would stop he collected some grass here and there which is found in the ocean and then he packed it the bleeding stopped and sadao was thinking about that man actually yes when he packed it with that uh, sea moss the bleeding stopped and he was thinking about that man what to do with this man sadao asked if we sheltered a white man in our house we should be arrested and if we turned him over a prisoner he would certainly die it's better we throw him into the river sadao said and hana agreed yes they were thinking that it's better why to take risk the police might arrest us we'll send him back to the ocean they said like that but both of them were not willing to throw him into the ocean they were saying yes we'll throw we'll throw but nobody was throwing finally after much deliberation hana told sadao you also cannot throw him back to the sea then there is only one thing to do we must carry him into the house hana finally volunteered no you can't throw him into the ocean it's better let us take him to the uh, house inside the houses but what about the servants sadao inquired we must simply tell them that we intend to give him to the police as indeed we must do the same sadao we must think of the children and our position it would endanger all of us if we did not give this man over a over as a prisoner of war yeah we'll hand over this man to police that's what we'll tell them then then there will be no problem she said certainly said i agreed i would not think of doing anything i would not think of doing means here so i don't think of doing any operation or any treatment for this man like that it's the meaning thus agreed together they lifted the man he was very light like a fowl just like a small bird okay he was carried to sadao's father room which was empty since the death of his father mm, the man looked dirty so they wanted to clear him or clean him at first sadao wanted to clean him but hana did not agree at this time sadao checked his pulse it's very low sadao had decided to operate on him because unless he was operated on him he would die hana cried in shock and told sadao not to operate on him see when he was outside what did he say i don't think of anything like that but here when he checked the pulse he was he was saying that hey unless he was uh, uh, done the operation definitely he was 
he would lo lose his life he was telling that means that's the tendency of every doctor that should be the do doctor's tendency but nowadays doctors are not so like that so simply they are eagerly waiting for money yes sada explained hana this man had some vitality he must have died by this time because of his wound but he is still alive which means there is a purpose for his living he is not at 25 saying this sada had gone out to fetch his operation kit yes actually uh, though hana was saying that this man would uh, you shouldn't do any operation he said that actually he should have died by this time but he has some vitality he had some purpose to live let us do like that he said and he, he had gone to fetch his operation kit yes servants reject to clean him see what happened hana called yumi the babysitter to clean the body of what uh, that white man the servants did not like the idea of treating a white man see i i already told you from small to the big here small to the big means not the size here the positions even the servants hated um, that americans the servants did not like the idea of treating a white man they told hana the white man ought to die he must die first he was shot by our soldiers then the sea caught him and wounded him with her rocks if the master heals that the gun and gun did and uh, what the sea did they will take revenge on us actually this is what uh, superstitious they were really superstitious what they were saying see first gun shot next to sea also tried to kill him but now you are trying to save him that gun and sea would take revenge on you so how is it possible right this is called superstition hana told them that they were trying to save him to hand over the man to police but she was trying to convince them no no we are not saving him we just give him some treatment after that we will hand over him to the police yes then listening to her words yumi followed hana with a wooden bucket and then when she bent over the white man to clean him she bit her lips and cried that she would not clean a white man see again at the sight of the white man yumi was uh, really irritated and then no i don't clean him he said hana tried to convince her but failed hana tried to say hey, what are you thinking he is just a man like that she said but no i don't do this she said and hana tried to warn her in a decent manner like i am your master you must do what i say but she did not listen to the words of hana even then yumi left the room leaving hana alone in the room hana cleaned his upper part and called sadow softly sadow came in with his surgeon's emergency bag and surgeon's coat that means he had already decided to do the operation hana reported sadow that yumi had not cleaned the white man she was she has also told him that she had cleaned the white man yes sadow cleaned his lower part actually upper part was cleaned by hana and sadow cleaned his lower body and checked his wound and he had asked hana to give anesthetic to the patient when sadow removed the moss from the wound the blood was flowing more sadow peeped through the wound with his surgeon's torch the bullet was still there in the wound in his body then he observed hana's face turning into sulfur color and she was about to vomit actually some people are afraid of some different things like hydrophobia uh, hematophobia hematophobia means whenever they see blood they will be afraid right here here also maybe she had that hematophobia on seeing the blood gushing out from the wound of the white man she turned sulfur color and then she had gone out to vomit but sadow did not leave the patient with this sadow became ruthless and started his operation why he became ruthless here because he did not go to help hana when she was di distressed that is why he had become ruthless and uh, he started his operation the man groaned in pain but sadow did not care for him but talking to himself he had the habit of speaking with patients while doing the operation then hana came in and gave anesthetic to the white man sadow was trying to find out the details of the wound with the help of an instrument he remembered his anatomy professor's words ignorance of the human body is the surgeon's cardinal sin sirs to operate without as complete knowledge of the body as if you had made it anything less than that is murder yes while doing the operation every time he remembered the words of his anatomy professor at uh, that is in america right what his professor told you how to know everything about 
the patient's body. Anatomy is very important. If you don't know this, it's without knowing this. If you do any operation, it's like murder. It's like sin like that. He said those words he remembered. That's why uh, Sadao had become famous. He had known everything. Finally, the bullet was brought out and he completed the operation. After doing the operation, he turned as swiftly as though he had never passed and from his medicines, he chose a small vial and from it filled a hypodermic and thrust it into the patient's left arm. Then putting down the needle, he took the man's wrist again. The pulse under his finger fluttered once or twice and then grew stronger. Yes, he did the operation and he gave one injection after that. Though it was uh, slow in the beginning, later it became stronger, the pulse. Then he said, this man will live in spite of all. He said to Hannah and sighed. The operation was successful. Yes. After the operation, Hannah with Tom. What happened? What was the conversation between uh, Hannah and Tom? Let us see. Hannah, though not interested, was feeding him with a long spoon. Then uh, the prisoner told Hannah that his name was Tom. After three days, Sadao met Tom. When Sadao entered the room, the man was trying to get up. Dr. Sadao scolded him for trying that. Hey, why are you getting up? Trying to kill yourself? Just lie down. He warned him like that. After the conversation, Tom asked Sadao, What are you going to do with me? Sadao took a minute to answer, but finally spoke. Actually, that white man asked, Sir, What are you going to do with me? He said. Uh, he took one minute to answer and finally he spoke. I don't know what I must do with you. You are a prisoner of war. I have to hand over you to the police. But he stopped there. Before he completed, Tom turned aside sadly. Why he was sad? Because you are a prisoner. I have to hand over you to the police. He said like that. But he did not listen his complete words and turned aside and said, Okay. Hannah was waiting for Sada outside when... He came out, she told him that the servants were unwilling to work as long as they hid Tom in the house. The servants also complained that Sadao had love towards Americans because he was there in America for some long time, like 22 years. That means at the age of 22, he had gone and he came back at the age of 30. That's why they were saying, you are there in America, that's why you like Americans. But Sadao condemned it. No, it's, it's, it's not true. And old and told that all the Americans were their enemies. He had also given clarity that he had been trained to save lives rather than killing, he said. But the servants can't understand that, Hana said. Servants left Sadao's house. Yes, the, the day had come. Every day, Sadao checked the wound of the white man. On the seventh day, two things happened. The servants uh, left Sadao's house saying that they could not work as long as the white man was there in the house. The second thing happened was Hana was tense that those servants might reveal the matter outside and the police might arrest her husband. She was working in the garden then saw a messenger coming to the door in official uniform. She was terrified that the servants might have revealed the matter outside on seeing the messenger. The messenger reached Hana and asked for Sadao. Uh, Hana led him to Sadao. And then after reaching Sadao, that messenger told, you are to come to the palace. The man said, the old general is in pain again. Hana relaxed and she had asked one more question also. Is that all? Yes. What do you think? The messenger asked. So on seeing the tension of uh, this uh, Hana, he had really worried, he had been worried that his uh, Sadao was worried. Hana relaxed, but still there was tension on. And seeing her tension, Sadao had decided to take a decision about Tom on that particular day. Yes, however, I have to take decision like that, he thought. Then Sadao revealed the matter to General about the white man. What happened? Sadao had gone to treat the general. After that, Sadao revealed him about the white man. The general was speechless in the beginning but spoke finally that he would not allow the police to arrest Sadao. Here, the general was selfish because there would be no one to treat him if Sadao was arrested. Finally, he came with a plan that he would send his professional or the personal assassins to kill the 
white men. Assassin's men, personal, are the trained murderers. He had also assured Sado that the assassins not only kill the man with internal bleeding, but also remove the dead body from the spot. Yes, he had assured him like that. Then Sado agreed to that with him and uh, came home. He did not reveal this matter even to his wife. Hana. Did assassins come? Let us see what happened. The doors of the white man kept open during the night. On that day, he could not sleep and uh, he, he heard some heavy footsteps carrying a heavy object. Yes, this might be the assassin, Sado thought. And the next morning, yes, because maybe he was in the thought and then there were some sounds. He thought that that might be assassins who came to kill this man. Like that he thought. The next morning, he rushed to the room where the American was in bed. But as he opened the door, to his surprise, he found the young man out of bed and was preparing to go into the garden. And maybe Sado warned him, hey, who gave you permission to come out of your room and go into the garden, he said. Yes, the man had given some harsh answer like, I am not, uh, that means I don't wait for anyone's permission, like that, he said. The man was feeling better actually today. That's why he was doing like that. Sado again, once again, examined his wound and said, Massas would do some better. So you'll be all right. Don't worry, he said. Then the white man said, Sir, say, doctor, I have got something I want to say to you. Thank you. And if I had not met a job like you, well, I wouldn't be alive today. I know that, he said. What did he say? Sir, if I had not met a person like you, I wouldn't have been alive today. Really, you are great. So, if all the jobs, if all the Japanese people are like you, there won't be any war. That's what he said. And I want to thank you, he said. Sado bowed and did not speak, but told him to take rest. Yes. The assassins did not come even on the second day and even on the third day also. But the two nights were terrible for him. The second night actually... Also, he heard some uh, sounds and second night also he was tensed and uh, there was no one. And then third night was really horrible because uh, while sleeping, they heard some sound because it was raining outside and some strong winds were also there. And uh, actually what happened while sleeping, he woke up suddenly because of the sound. And at the same time, Hana also woke up and Hana was uh, trying to go out of the room. But Sadao protested, no, we shouldn't go, wait, he said. What happened? We have to go out and see what happened outside, uh, she said. But no, should be quiet like that, he said. And so nobody came. And on that final, finally, on the, after the third day, he had taken, he unable to bear the tension, he had decided to send him away. So he met Tom on that day and told him, it is not hidden that you are here. It's better you leave this place. I will provide you my boat with full of clothing and food. Go to the islands there and uh, whenever you get the help from Korean boats, you can go back to your country. That means uh, in front of, I told you already his house was on the beach and uh, some uh, maybe one or two miles away, there were some islands and uh, he had uh, told him that, yes, you can take shelter in that islands. Nobody will come over there. Only Korean boats come over there. If the Korean boats come, you take the help from those Korean boats and you can leave that place and you can go to your country like that he had given him some instructions thus he had given him some more instructions he had uh, been given a torch a single flash meant he was alive and a double flash meant he needed some food that might that night he had gone to the islands after some days he did not receive any flash from the island which meant he got support from the Korean boards. Actually, while sending him, he had given so many instructions like don't make fire, don't eat fish cooked. Okay, so every day you give me one flash. If you give me one flash at the twilight, not completely uh, during day and night or not completely during day, simply you give me a flash just during the twilight so nobody would identify. Like that's why he had given some instructions like that. And he had given him some clothing and he had given him some food also. And finally, after some days, he did not receive that flash. That means he got some support from Korean boats and he left. Once again, he met the general to treat him. He told him that the white man had escaped. But the general explained, Sadao, 
uh, explain said out that he had not sent assassins because of his health problems and he had also given him some uh, some more uh, things like no said out don't uh, think that i don't have patriotism so like that he told that evening sado looking at the island recollected his life in america an old woman had been very kind to take care of him when he suffered from influenza and finally he thought about the white man yes when he was there in america a old woman had taken care of him even though he was suffering from influenza and it is all because of humanity right and at the same time he remembered this man maybe that humanity had given me the courage to save that white man he thought like that and thus the story ends and here you see the theme of this lesson is humanity is better than enmity love your enemy than no what then no war is required yes that's what the main theme in this uh, sub themes like professionalism versus patriotism humanity versus enmity these are the main themes there ends the story uh, my dear students if you like my video please subscribe thank you